How's it going everyone? It is Eli with Common Sense and today I am bringing you guys a new type of video. I've done this stuff kind of in the past but I never really uploaded anything like this but today we're going to be looking at a rack store hunt and so I'm going to be putting some footage up on the screen and you can see exactly what I saw at these local stores. So without further ado, let's get started. I also thought I saw some Jordan 1 Chicago's, but as you can see, they are Puma, so nah. Also funny little story, I actually ran into this very nice Sikh gentleman there, and he thought that I actually worked at Marshalls because I had my work polo on, and granted, I was looking at every single item, and so it probably looked like I was stocking the shelves, but he actually asked me if I could help him out pick a fragrance, and so he said that he really liked the guest fragrances there, and I kind of helped him check out some of the really cool ones and pointed him in the direction of the commodity one, which was again, sort of a gem find there, but that was kind of cool that we got to kind of talk a little bit about fragrance there. So shout out to you, I hope that we meet again. <laughs> but as you guys can see here, I picked up a few items and we're gonna go ahead and review them. So first up on this list is Hollister Wave X. I have several of the Hollister Wave fragrances. They're not the greatest, they don't last that long. Um, they're definitely kind of a cheap aquatic vibe, you know, something you can wear to the gym or just around and spray it again, you know, a couple hours later. Nothing really beast mode or anything like that. Just kind of average, just fresh, cheap, but I really liked the design of the packaging here and I think that just looks really modern and just kind of awesome. So we're gonna check that one out. 13 bucks, kind of got the ocean and these kind of geometric patterns all over the bottle. So we've actually got a cool tiny little miniature bottle here. I'm a big fan of these little mini bottles. I think they're kind of cool. I have a few of the other ones, but you have a really nice black metal cap at the top and you have this really cool teal X on the back with the Hollister logo in the front. So it's kind of three dimensional and it just looks really cool. As you can see, it kind of follows the style direction of the other Hollister Wave line. You have just the regular, the Wave 2.0 and then the Wave X. So let's go ahead and spray this one out. Oh man, it gives me a really strong similarity to Avon's Blue Escape as well as Polo's Ultra Blue. These two are very similar. It smells a little bit more like the Avon Blue Escape, but if you haven't smelled that one, this one will give you a good idea as well as a little bit of the Aqua de Gio Profondo. Basically that same blue sporty kind of aquatic salty vibe. Yeah, super salty, aquatic, and herbal. I really like this one. Yeah, you definitely get some salty, kind of aquatic, woody, herbal facets to this one. 
So you have grapefruit, bergamot, and melon up top, middle notes of cypress, lavender, and sage, and a base of fir balsam, musk, and ambergris. So just off of the first initial spray, I'm getting a lot of just salty aquatic woods. There is a nice bright grapefruit and kind of that bergamot combination, but with that nice aquatic melon up top, it's just a really nice tropical vibe and it doesn't smell overly like melon. I'm not a huge fan of melon in fragrance, but I think when it's done properly, it can smell really nice, especially when it blends and plays nicely with these other citruses like it does here. And here I get a really strong similarity to Polo's Ultra Blue, a um, little bit of inspiration from Armani's Aqua de Gio Profondo. Those are blue, citrusy, kind of salty fragrances. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's an ambergris note here listed on Fragrantica, but honestly, they're not gonna be using real ambergris. They're gonna be using some sort of aroma chemical that mimics that nice, bright, salty sea aquatic air in that sort of ambroxan accord here. The cypress here is nice, kind of dry and earthy with a little bit of a dusty vibe. And that melon, it does blend nicely here. That sage and the lavender definitely kind of reaches into your nose and it gives a calming facet to it. I have tested this one and it did last on my skin around six hours. So that's actually kind of a lot when you're looking at the price point because most Hollisters don't last that long. They're mainly kind of decent cheapies, not really worth it. I mean, I would much rather save my 15 or 20 bucks and use it towards a much longer lasting scent. However, this one is a fantastic gym scent. It's $12, it lasts again six hours, a little bit less sometimes, and you can really smell it if you kind of put your nose up to it. But it's not a beast, but it is great while it lasts. And this is probably my favorite Hollister wave flanker out of all of them by far. So this one, really nice for the price, $12, and that's Hollister X. Next up, we're gonna be looking at a fragrance from the house of Le Monde Gourmand, and this one is Rose Riche. Le Monde Gourmand is sort of another company that's under the Urban Outfitters kind of parent company. So they're kind of distributing under that brand and that's their fragrance line. But honestly, if you guys see these in the store, definitely pick them up and smell them because they're always loose. They're never really like packaged up. They have really nice gourmandish, high quality smelling scents. They don't last in a really long time unless you really spray the heck out of them, but they're cheap enough. Keep an eye out for Oud Sahara and Chai Spice. Those are some of my favorites and I regret not picking them up, especially Oud Sahara. That one's absolutely fantastic. It's warm, oudy, and gourmandish. Uh, it smells like a fantastic niche scent. I can't find any listed notes anywhere online on this fragrance. I just checked everywhere, couldn't even find it on the Urban Outfitters or Le Monde Gourmand's website. So it's safe to say that this is maybe discontinued, but we're gonna be relying on the nose for this one. I'm not that experienced or the greatest at picking out notes in women's fragrances, but I am definitely enjoying getting better at this and I'm kind of training my nose to pick up some more of these florals and kind of pink notes. Give this one a spray. Huh. Something in here reminds me a little bit of a Parfums de Marly Delina flanker. I don't remember which one it is. It could have been the really light kind of clear pink one, but that smells familiar. Now that I think about this, this actually reminds me a lot of Moschino's Toy Boy. It's that black kind of teddy bear one. It's got that pear, clove, and rose in it. Um, kind of gives me that same vibe, but here it's definitely a sour kind of tart citrus. Something I'm not really all that used to, maybe a pear or a kiwi here, kind of leaning towards the pear. It could also be lychee because that's kind of been an up and coming fragrance note that's been used in a lot of women's fragrances. It's tropical, it's aquatic, it's, it's kind of musky and it's nice. Here I get just a really nice tropical muskiness to this one. Definitely getting sort of a pink pepper vibe up top and a slight earthiness. And there's really, there's a unique floral vibe here. It's probably from that rose. It's bright and aquatic and definitely some sort of musks or synthetic ambroxan accord here that just keeps it smelling aquatic and rosy and tropical. Up top, you definitely have a sharp kind of musk that reaches into the airways, sort of the same way that some hair products will do. It does fade away around one to two hours. So you have to really get close to the skin to smell it. Could be my skin, but I'd imagine that this isn't the greatest concentration despite being marketed as an eau de parfum. I could really see this as a quick refresher if you just wanted something to keep in your car, hold it in your purse or something, and just kind of refresh yourself throughout the day. It's pleasant, 
but it's not something that I would really be reaching for. This one is definitely feminine leading, but I could really see anybody wear this one. Lately, I've actually been wanting to wear a clean rose fragrance, something similar to Maison Francis Kirkjohn's A La Rose or Parfums de Marly's Delina. I've kind of been digging that nice aquatic rose vibe because sometimes your tastes will kind of change as you develop your nose and your taste. On skin, you lose a lot of that kind of bright citrus tropical vibe and you're left with more of a kind of woody rose at the bottom. The musks aren't as in your face and it just kind of settles down and you really do kind of lose it altogether. Um, and that's kind of sad because I kind of had higher hopes for this one. But this one, not really that mind blowing, just sort of average. You could probably spend your money a little bit better. Um, I just saw this one, I wanted to pick it up and see how it developed on my skin to see if it would develop into something more rosy. But this one, it's just okay. But that one is Le Monde Gourmand's Rose Riche. And last but not least, we are going to be looking at Commodities Bergamot. So first, I kind of want to talk a little bit about this house. It is a house that was discontinued many years ago, I think around 2014, and then it was actually bought by the owner of Euro Perfumes in 2019. And for those of you who don't know, Euro Perfumes is the company that distributes Juliet Has a Gun, Costume National, Memo Paris, and it just distributes a lot of those higher niche fragrances. And to some, Commodity is a niche house. However, you can see them in Sephora's and some you know, some of these larger stores. So one could argue that it's not necessarily one of the bespoke, you know, niche fragrance houses because you can find them at a lot of places. But this, as of now, you can order Bergamot from Commodities' current website, but it is going to be their new bottle style. And this one actually is their older one, if I'm not mistaken. This one has their really interesting kind of frosted glass with the dark gray label on the front with the white text. And I believe the new ones have the white label with the black text. It could be wrong, but I know that this is the kind of classic style. So hopefully I got an old one. The new ones that I mentioned earlier go for about $135 for a full 100 ml bottle like this one. But this one I got for 35 bucks. Quite a steal. This one's often compared to Zerjoff's XJ1861 Renaissance. Let's give it a spray. Oh man, that is natural. Instant favorite out of all of these for sure. This one, just really nice, sweet and sour, natural smelling citrus with a nice soft kind of violet and vetiver here. Commodities Bergamot has top notes of Italian Bergamot, Brazilian Green Mandarin, and Clementine, with middle notes of Jasmine, Sambac Absolute, Moroccan Spearmint, Egyptian Geranium, with a base of Patchouli, Vetiver, Blonde Musk, White Musk, and Violet Leaf. So there's so many things going on with this one. It's just really sweet and natural smelling. What's interesting is I get a really nice natural rindiness in this one. It's clean, it's just really earthy and just really citrusy. This one, you don't have that orange rindiness, but this one, this one smells natural. Man, you also have some sort of really nice, beautiful white kind of white and violet florals here. It's really interesting. You have that jasmine and the musks that keep it really clean and soft. So immediately I picture John Vervito's Artisan Pure. This one is a similar vibe to that one. It's just kind of almost an icy kind of orange, but at the same time, you have that nice rindiness with that kind of pedigree and that green herbal vibe to this one. And you also get just a nice refreshing orange and just kind of vibe going similar to the Tom Ford's Mandarino Diamalfi or the Mandarino Diamalfi Aqua like this one. I feel like these two blended together make this fragrance. This kind of is a nice middle ground to those and it's really pleasant here. Interesting enough, on the dry down you lose some of that herbalness and you're left with a really nice citrusy, bright muskiness and amber. It reminds me a little bit of Versace's Eau Fraiche where it has that nice kind of musky uh, kind of citrusy star fruit note. But here you're going to be getting more of that kind of bergamot and mandarin vibe here. It's just really interesting. I'd have to say for $35, you are definitely getting a higher quality juice. You know, it's this kind of yellow juice. It's going to be thicker. It's an eau de parfum concentration. And really, you can't find anything better for $35. Um, when I picked this up, I thought it was going to be 50 like I've seen many of the other ones. But this one was 35 Almost grabbed the second bottle to resell or just have as a backup. But I thought, eh, I'll leave it there for somebody else who might like it. Absolute 
diamond in the rough. $35, I'd highly recommend this one. Basically any commodity fragrance. Some of the rack stores will let you return them. Thankfully the Marshalls allows you to return them if they're open. So maybe pick it up and I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. You are getting something that's gonna be kicking well above its bracket and highly recommend this one. Really impressed with what they did here. All right, you guys, that does it for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed this type of video. I think I'm gonna be doing this in the future because I check the rack stores all the time and I love to just make some of these update videos where you can see me walking through and I think I enjoy watching other people do it, so I'm gonna to try to do that as well. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a fantastic week this week. I've been Eli with Common Sense and until the next time, bye-bye. Oh, wow. Look at all this. Us Californians are not used to that.